Chapter 11, Section 7, Process Mining in Practice. In this section, we try to discuss a little bit into how a process mining project unfolds. We can only give a rough overview. A starting point for our discussion is the process mining methodology that was proposed by Van der Arzt and others in 2012. These authors identify five major steps. First, we need to frame and plan analyzing the problem. Second, we need to collect suitable data. Third, we have to analyze and look for patterns. Fourth, we have to interpret and we have to create insights from them. Fifth, based on these insights, we have to create a business impact. Let us comment a little bit on some of these steps. Let's start with phase number one, plan and frame the problem. First, we have to formulate the problems that we're interested in, in a top-down way. Typical questions may be, how and why does customer experience with our order to cash process diverge? Why does the process perform poorly? Or why do we have frequently defects in performance dealings? These overall questions can be broken down into sub-questions and it, they can be associated with performance and quality criteria. At this stage it is important to identify the needed, needed resources such that we can roll out the project. Here are some insights from a pilot project in Brisbane, Australia, with a major insurance company. This pilot was a project that was rolled out in a time frame of four months. It required the support of two business analysts in part-time, one database administrator and one executive manager. Furthermore, a full-time data scientist was required. After the planning phase comes the actual collection of data. We have to identify the relevant data sources. These can be information systems like SAP, Oracle or BPMN systems. We need to identify process-related entities and their identifiers. And we need to map them to processes. Once we have an understanding of these data structures, we need to extract traces. We collect these records and associate them with process entities. And we group them according to process identifiers. As a data format, we may select the XAS format. It is important that the quality of the data needs to be investigated. Very likely the data has to be cleaned, for instance by filtering irrelevant events, or combining events, or filtering out traces that are infrequent or not relevant. Now we have the data available and we can start analyzing. This is the fun part of the job. We discover the real process from these event logs. We can calculate various process metrics like cycle time, waiting times or error rates. We explore the frequent paths and we discover different types of cases. Tools also help us to identify process deviances 
and predictors for success. Let's recap. In this chapter, we discussed process monitoring. We have seen that we can support process monitoring by the help of dashboards or by the help of process mining tools that show us information about processes as models. Process mining is currently the way, changing the way how we do BPM and it changes the BPM lifecycle. The insights that process mining delivers help us to introduce some shortcuts in the BPM lifecycle and speed up the overall improvement of the process. With the data available, we can readily jump to the analysis and redesign of a process. By the help of the available event log data, we can test and validate hypotheses about the performance and conformance of the process. Monitoring and in particular process mining provides very detailed insights into the process and is of great help to make the work of the process analyst efficient and effective.